If example two uses the same geometry the and the same welding rod as example one, uh, we just have a, a load that now alternates from zero to 10,000 newtons. So the maximum load is the same as the static load in the previous problem, but it is a varying load from zero to that value. And if you recall, that is going to produce a uh, force that goes from zero to a maximum, produces a stress, a set of stresses that go from zero to a maximum. So this is a repeated loading case. In a repeated loading case, uh, the alternating stress is equal to the mean stress, which is equal to half of the maximum stress. So we'll calculate the maximum stresses based on the 10 kilonewtons, divide by 2 for the alternating and mean. Uh, now we are using the Goodman equation, we've got a reliability indicated and we got a weld height of three millimeters. So we can use a lot of the information from the previous problem to, to work this one. Um, straight away we've got the yield strength in shear, the ultimate strength in shear which is given in the notes in Shigley is dot six seven times the ultimate strength. And then from the previous problem I've pulled the equations for tau prime and tau double prime as they were there. And since we have H in this case is 3, we can calculate those values here. And those both represent tau prime max and tau double prime max. Now with the uh, weld, we are going to include a stress concentration for fatigue for a weld. Um, and for both of these, what we're going to use is a KFS equal to 1.5. From the table, we've got four options, four potential options for stress concentration in a weld. That's the closest one to this geometry for both the direct and the transverse shear stress, so that's what we'll include. So basically now, the alternating shear stress is going to be equal to one-half tau prime max times KFS. That calculation yields 9.31 megapascals. And a similar calculation for the double prime, the um, indirect shear stress. That one yields 42.85 megapascals. And since this is a repeated stress, those are also the same values for the mean stresses. We still want the amplitude. Tau alternating is equal to tau n is equal to now 9.31 squared plus 42.85 squared rooted which comes out to be 43.85 megapascals. We also need an endurance limit for this. And this is calculated in the traditional uh, Marin factor way with Ka through Ke. And starting off with an unmodified shear stress of 1 half SUT. So one half of 427 is 213.5. Ka for welds, we're going to use the uh, as forged condition. Which looks like this. That gives dot 657, so significant reduction just from the surface finish. Kb. We're treating this as a uniform shear stress, and Shigley indicates that when that is the case, when you only have a uniform shear stress, you don't factor in the size calculation. So we can set that equal to 1. Kc, which is the load factor, for the same reason, since we have a uniform shear stress, we use 0.59. That is, if you have just a round shaft with nothing but torque on it, you use this factor. Um, and that round shaft with nothing but torque has nothing but shear, so it is again sort of a uniform shear case. The temperature factor, we're going to assume it's room temperature. And the reliability factor, as stated here, we're looking for 99%. We have about 8, 1, 4. 
multiplying out. And I'm going to change my notation slightly. I'm going to call it this S S E. That extra S there, that's indicating this is a shear endurance limit. And we can call it that because we're using this shear load factor. All right, so we have an alternating shear stress, we have an alternating mean stress, we have the endurance limit in shear, and we have the ultimate strength in shear. So we can rewrite Goodman equation based purely on the shear values here. So both forces are just 43.85. And the endurance limit. 67.37, the ultimate strength was 427, or excuse me, the ultimate strength in shear is not 427, it is 286.1. And carrying out that calculation, we get a value regardless of 1.24. And since that is an endurance limit, that is based on infinite life. So the prediction here for this load case, for this geometry, with that weld size, is an infinite life through the run of the part.